Today we're at Riverwood Conservation Area or Riverwood Park or Conservatory or however you like to, whatever you like to call it. As you can hear, um, this, this conservation area is in the city of Mississauga. There's a lot of, I'm right at the front here, there's a lot of traffic and it's pretty loud, but you'll know you're at Riverwood when you see this giant sculpture. And when you enter the park, you enter the park here at this intersection, and when you drive in, you can drive all the way back this way down that road, and it leads to a bunch of large parking lots and, and big open grass areas where you can, people can have family picnics and do camping and stuff like that. But I'm not going to go over there today. I'm going to go into the nice wooded area to hike. So if you enter from, this is the main entrance, I suggest you drive this way. You just go down this little, you turn left into this little uh, driveway and you go down that area. And that'll lead to a parking lot where you can park your car and go down to the uh, the nice nature area, which is where, which we're about to explore now. Um, right over here, if you're walking, you can just enter from this area here. You can get in and there's a, a little staircase that'll bring you down. This little staircase here that'll bring you down into the wooded area, which is what we're going to do now. Okay, so this is the Red Trail and Cullum Trail and Credit River are that way. So if we do go this way, it's going to avoid this person here. If we go in this direction, it does lead to some other pathways. They're not quite as nice, but maybe we'll go over there later. So basically the stairs where we came from are that way. And we're just going to hang a right into this area. So there's multiple trails you can go down. So this is really interesting. This wall was probably constructed in the 1800s and it was probably part of a homestead. There were a lot on this property, there were a lot of homesteads, basically properties or areas where people owned homes and lived. And some of it is still here. I've been here a couple of times and in the past I did stumble upon one of the homesteads. There was a basement left over, like a concrete foundation. And it was probably, a family probably lived there in the early 1900s. But we're going to try and find it today. It's pretty cool because there's a foundation there and there's a leftover tractor just half sunken into the ground and some other uh, leftovers from the family's life there. All right, so here it splits off again. I know where that goes. If you go in that direction, you end up in the areas where the, you end up in the picnic areas. I don't want to go down there. This I don't think really leads anywhere. Yeah, it doesn't really lead anywhere specific. So we'll just go down. We'll just continue down the path we were going. So yeah, it's a little bit busy. <laughs> but this is a beautiful ravine. Just off the boardwalks when you first get in. This is really nice. I'm going to be circling around and entering this ravine from the back end. So we'll continue our walk here. A lot of great dead trees to throw knives at. So again, there's another path that branches up off the hill. I'm going to go up here now and take a look. Every time I see a path that goes up the hill, I think I'm going to go up and look at it to see if I can find 
the homestead that I had found before. So we can keep going this way, or I can go up that way. So I'm going to take this way. There's a lot of these paths that branch off, especially when you're going up the hill. Be real careful, there's lots of roots to trip on. So yeah, this definitely looks familiar. When you get up on the hill, there's just tons of paths that branch off. In different directions. This one I believe just goes right back down. And it goes back down. There's a dude here. So now I'm walking alongside the top of the ravine, that beautiful ravine that you saw a minute ago. And from up here, it's just a gorgeous view. So we'll just continue down the path. The homestead might be up here somewhere, so we're just going to keep going, try and find it. Okay, I think I found it. I recognize the junk. So this is, <laughs> I think the city just kind of pushed it all into one spot. But this is crazy. So it's literally a bunch of antiques. All right, so let's look over the things that are here, the items. We have a old sink. <laughs> a part of an old tractor axle with a, a wheel. And a bunch of other stuff. There's a, you can see a wheelbarrow there, part of an ease trough. Um, Maybe a bed frame there. A lot of unusual stuff. This looks like uh, the wheels from the baby carriage. And part of a bed here. That's, a, that's obviously uh, part of a lawnmower. And we'll see if that there was an item here. Okay, there's a bed pan there. Not gonna touch that. There is some other tire rims and barrels and stuff. What's really interesting is this record player. This is an old record player, which I saw last time and I was gonna take it, but it's so rusted that no antique store or anything is, no one's gonna be interested in having this, but it's still cool to see. You can see some of the vinyl is actually still, some of the vinyl is still on here from whatever record got stuck. Maybe somebody spilled orange juice on there. But um, yeah, the sliders are still here. But yeah, this is clearly a record player. This is where the needle was. Crazy, eh? And if you look underneath, the electric motor is still there and the wiring. So yeah, this is clearly a, an old record player, probably from, oof, who knows, the 19, maybe 1950s, 60s or older, I'm not sure, but it's obviously an old record player. But uh, yeah, some pretty cool stuff here. It's just strange that it's here in the middle of this conservation area. But let's move on to the rest of the homestead. So this is an old tractor. You can see that the wheels are sunken into the ground. And it's it's been here for probably almost a hundred years. Let's see if I can find the uh, the basement foundation. I believe it was this way.
it's not super easy to find. Okay, there's some remnants, remnants of it. Okay, yep, so I'm in the thick weeds here. So here we have, the weeds are really overgrown around it, but this is a refrigerator. Yeah, this is an old refrigerator that was left here. I'm pretty sure I just spotted some poison oak. back on a path but I want to find that tractor nope I've gone too far it's really really gonna be in the weeds there okay, I'm still looking for it not easy to find there it is Awesome, okay, I found it. It's a lot harder to find. I think when I found it the first time, I think we stumbled upon it in the spring, early spring or late fall. But as you can see, the area around here is super thick woods. So there was barely some semblance of a path here to get in. There was another tractor, which I think might've been taken, but um, probably, who knows, maybe an antique shop owner came out and took it, but this is the, this, the homestead. I can see somebody has built a campfire here recently. But um, yeah, this is it. From what I remember, I did look it up after coming here last time. But from what I remember, this is an old barn house. Yeah, this is just an old foundation. Probably early 1900s. You can see the entrance here. And we'll just step in for a minute. So there's been a lot of vandalism. People partying in here, probably teenagers or whatever. And um, this is it. Just a tiny little bunker type enclosure. You can see like an old sink. You see some of the old stuff is still here. It looks like it could be from the 1940s. But um, the structure was probably still here and still being used um, before Mississauga was made into a city. And this was turned into a municipal park. Mississauga is a relatively new city. I'm not sure exactly when Riverwood became an, uh, a municipal park or when Mississauga actually was declared a city, but it wasn't that long ago compared to most cities. I think Mississauga is only about 30 years old, to be honest, maybe 40 years old. All right, so you can see it was really in the middle of nowhere there, really off the beaten path. I'm now covered in seeds, spider webs, and mosquito bites. If you're into going down paths that are in thick woods, this is a great place. A lot of high up areas, a lot of um, hilly climbs, inclines and declines. And paths like this that are sort of off the regular path, that are a little more, more private. This is back onto the regular path. And we're still up, up high on the hill. We'll just keep going in this direction. And we're walking above the ravine that you see when you come in shortly uh, from the entrance. So we take a little detour down here. Kind of walking down the side of the ravine. It's just a huge ravine. And I'm just standing on the side of it.
But if you like going for challenging walks, you can definitely do that here. And, but if you just want to go with your family and have a regular easy walk, it's also a good place. Climb back up here and, um, and then I'll keep going to the end, circle down, and then we'll walk through the ravine there. All right, so the path branches off. I'm up a little higher, but there's another one down there. And we're gonna head down there and uh, into the ravine. And where I just was a minute ago, um, in the thicker woods where that homestead was, there's a path that kind of comes out from that direction there. So you can see they all connect. It's the ravine. Right, so this is the end. There's a fence here. We basically reached the end of the park. So we're going to head down in this direction into the ravine. And I haven't actually been to the end of the park in this direction before. So I'm going to slap this buddy on my head and slap mosquitoes off me. Clearly there's a fence and uh, it's been knocked down, but this is probably the end of the park. I think this is a good place to start uh, exploring the ravine. wonder if there's any frogs in here. Because we're right at the end of the path, there's not a lot of people here. There's actually nobody, but I can see the people up there more. Um, it is a busy day. It's Sunday. Tons of downed trees. The city comes in and takes some of them down. That tree wasn't taken down by the city. That was probably a storm. Wonder if there's any frogs here. Now, because of the sketchy woods near my place, I'm always on the lookout for amphibious life. on here. Somebody build a fort. <laughs> it's like somebody built some sort of fort here. All right, let's get back in the ravine.
It's actually more fun if you take the ravine. That was a frog. If you've seen any of my other videos, I've learned the key to frog watching is to sneak, spot them from a distance, and then sneak up really slow. But the problem is, is that they are often very camouflaged. Makes for an interesting walk when you, uh, Take the rocks. Frog just leaped into here. Oh. We're coming up pretty close to the boardwalk where I sh first showed you the view of this ravine. And I can hear people again. All right, well, we'll continue on the path that we were on before, before we went up the hill. And I'll check back with you in a minute. All right, so I just came out of the ravine and hung a right and walked down the path a little bit. This is the path that I originally went up on to go find the homestead and kept walking in that direction and ended up in the, uh, the ravine. But now we're going to continue this way. So two visits ago when I was here, we saw some live deer and, um, it's more likely to see them at dusk, but, uh, we were able to get really close and there was actually a crowd of people around them. And I'm guessing it's because this park is, it's huge. It's a really big conservation area. I mean, there are bigger conservation areas, but this is a sizable one. And uh, the deer are probably used to having people around. So they're probably a little bit slightly domesticated deer. Enough for them to allow people to get close anyway. Yeah, it actually gets really nice up here. This part of the red trail is really nice. There's huge, really old growth trees here and the side of a ravine. Yeah, this is where it gets really beautiful from here on. <coughs> well, I'm going to climb up there. See, this is what the city does. They come around and slice the logs up so they biodegrade a little faster. But this is just beautiful. I mean, there's more beautiful places in the world, but I almost want to call it majestic, but not quite because I've been to, I've been to the Rockies out west. Those are majestic. This is just pretty. It looks like we hit a bike trail here, so. If you're into mountain biking, this is also a really awesome place to come. There's the trail down there. I'll walk along the path up here for a bit. And then I'll try to rejoin it. This bike trail is almost making me want to buy a bike. This would be a lot of fun. All right, we're going to head back down to the trail. This, this bike trail continues on, but I see that um, the trail is, is starting to merge with the, with the river, the Credit River, which is the same river I go boating in, which leads out to Lake Ontario. 
but the river doesn't leak, lead out to Lake Ontario until you get to Port Credit. That happens in Port Credit, which is right on the water. We are further north. Still about a 15, 20 minute drive from Lake Ontario. But uh, back on the path, we're gonna go look at the water a little bit. This is one of the beautiful features of Riverwood Park. And to be honest, most of the conservation area parkland in Mississauga is on the river. And the path just kind of merges with the with the river here. So beautiful, especially in the late afternoon. The sunlight glimmering off the, the water here. We have some hawks. Some birds of prey up in the sky, looking for rats and mice. So the path does kind of swerve closer to and further away from the lake. But you still have these little these little paths that um, that go in toward the, the river. If you want to hang out by the river and have a little bit of privacy like a picnic or something, picnic for two or something like that. And you can go down these little paths and there's little areas that are a little more private. If you just want to hang out by the river and have a picnic down by the river. Oh, okay. And the path continues. Just paths everywhere. I don't know where this goes, but it's probably back to the river. Yep. Jesus, your dog's there. Okay, person. Sorry. I also want to go for a swim. Come on. Okay. Let's go, let's go. Hey. Okay, that just freaked me out for a split second. I thought it was a fox. The dog looks like about the size of a fox and color of a fox, which wouldn't even be that scary because I've encountered fox before and they're uh, <clears throat> they're not too vicious. They're more like cats than dogs. Whoa. Okay. Cool. So even though I've been here a couple of times, it's a pretty big place, and I guess I haven't seen everything. A more semi-private area near the water here. Look at these, there's all these little private paths. So you really don't have to stick to the main path where most of the people are. You can really do a lot of walking on these more uh, these more remote pathways that span all over the park. I haven't done a lot of walking through these, so I'm kind of I'm kind of exploring as you are. Okay, this is a nice little area. Wow, beautiful.
just poking out at another spot. And wow, look at those those trees growing on the top of that flagstone. Looks like they can fall off at any minute. But this is just gorgeous here. Look at this grass. Beautiful place for a picnic on this lawn here. With this wild grass. Next to the river and this big rock flagstone wall. Oh, wow, so cool. Love these rocks here. Okay, these people are having a little picnic, so I'm gonna. I'm just not gonna walk that way. I'm gonna go through the, the path instead. Just don't wanna bother them. All right, so this comes out to Moore River, and we have a gigantic bridge here. So this is, I think, might be Burnthorpe Road, possibly. Oh, these things are just massive. And this is actually part of the path, you can see. The path comes out here, continues under the bridge, and just continues on that way. From what I remember from last time, this curves around. You can probably hear the cars. This curves around, you walk under the bridge and head back in the direction that we were just at. So let's see if I'm right here. Right, so I just gone up, just gone up that area around the bend and um, this leads to the road, and this just goes under the bridge, which we just walked under that bridge. And the path kind of circles around and comes up under the bridge. So I was walking, I was walking down there just a moment ago. Near the river. This is actually part of the path. Right, so we can continue in that direction. It doesn't, I don't think it really goes anywhere cool. It's mostly a uh, highway and whatever. There's a fence here, so that's the end of the park. And what you normally do is just go down this way. If you're not afraid of heights, that is. Okay, I fell. Injured myself. But that is just part of it. Oh yeah. That doesn't look good. And I have good hiking boots on too. So that's my second fall on one of these excursions. All right, so we're back out on the path. And now, I'm heading back in the direction that we came. All right, so I'm certain I'm sure this probably has an Instagram page, but um, I see these all over the place. I'll find out what these are called. I don't know if they're called anything, but it seems to be some sort of trend where people build these these stick forts because you see them in you see them all over in different parks, um, and not just in Mississauga. I've seen them in other cities as well. If anyone knows what these things are called or why people do it, please leave a comment and let me know.
There's the opening. And we can certainly go inside. I mean, I don't totally trust it. It doesn't look like a structural engineer or civil engineer was a part of this, was a part of building this structure. But I mean, it looks pretty, it's pretty solid. But um, we won't go in there. I think it's just about time for a, a frosty beer. So I'm gonna find a nice spot to sit down. Crack a cold one. And just enjoy the scenery for a bit. Take a little break. That looks like a good spot. This is steep here. All right, <clears throat> well, my battery's at about 35%, so we're almost done here for the day. I could use my phone, but I brought a couple of frosty ones. I have this uh, lunch bag, which is insulated. It's an insulated lunch bag. It's kind of insulated like cloth coolers are. And um, if you have one of these, it's ice packs. You put these ice packs in it, it keeps everything cold. I did bring some food, but not really hungry. But I did bring some frosty cold ones. So I have a cream ale and a, I have a Moosehead Cracked Canoe. Cracked Canoe, which is 3.5%, a little bit better for, the, for day drinking. And uh, I have a Sleeman's, which is one of my favorite beers, the cream ale variety. which I like a lot more than, than the uh, Crack Canoe. So I'm gonna have a Sleeman's. I don't have a can opener, but I have a lighter. Which I, think I, can, I think I can get it open with a lighter. This is my first time trying this, by the way. All right, got it. All right, well, cheers. My injury is starting to scab up. It's not too bad. So I'm fine there. But, um, that's good. This is my, my view from my log perch here. All right, we're gonna head back down and get back on the path. <clears throat> Sounds pretty quiet. So I'll head, actually I'll head down this, head down here. Alright, so we're going to head down the Cullen Trail.
These are bulrushes. There's some swamp here. Definitely frog territory here. Definitely frog habitat. <clears throat> I'm really very tempted to go over there. You know what? I'm just going to do it. I see some animal prints. I really want to know what's over there. Shit. Yeah. That was a little tricky to get past. It's really swampy over here. You go off the path and really find some cool stuff sometimes. What is going on here? This looks like um, giant beams from some structure. Like, look at this metal cabling. Could be a bridge. Maybe a bridge that used to be built here at one point. I want to go in every direction here. So I'm like really far off the path, middle of nowhere. I really want to go this way. I'm on high alert. So I don't know what I'll encounter back here. Okay, so I get to do a balancing act here. Some real swampy land here. Hopefully I can get across this without falling. <laughs> these look like, I almost wanna say these look like deer tracks. Found the river, and I'm pretty sure that's a beaver there. Looks like he's munching on something. That's about as close as I want to get to this guy. Because I don't know what happens when you freak them out. But uh, it could be a muskrat, I guess. But um, it's pretty big. That's that's, that's his head there. But I don't want to mess with them too much. As much as I want to get a better shot. He's definitely chowing down on something there. Okay, well, that's enough of that. I'm going to go. I don't recommend anyone does that going too far off the path like that because you don't know what kind of uh, wildlife you're going to encounter by accident. You don't want to surprise some of these animals in case you want to know about the fishing situation. Now, I see an opening here. 
and I just can't help myself. I need to see what's here. Looks like the city just dumped a bunch of gravel here. Like this is prime area to see some wildlife. You don't have to go too far off the path. on the designated pathways. Okay, well I've seen that plant before and I may have come in contact with it today. So, too late. It's back here. There's just more of these, uh, more of these path, pathways. So the GoPro is gonna die in a minute, but I can continue shooting with my phone. So I'm just going to continue on down the path, make our way to the exit, and I'll stop for any other interesting stuff that comes along. Okay. All right, so <laughs> the GoPro died, so back to the, uh, the old school way of doing this, using the phone. So when we first entered, I don't know, we had a choice of going this way. We had a couple of choices and we're back at that junction. So that's the column trail where I just came out. You can see the column trail sign there. Over there, is where we first entered and down there I can't remember where that leads to to be honest but we'll take a quick peek just in case you want to come here we'll do a full investigation if memory serves me correctly I think it might actually go lead to the UTM campus otherwise known as University of Toronto Mississauga Wondering what this fence is for, restoration in progress. This wetland is undergoing restoration work until spring 2021. Please don't enter or disturb. Okay, this is pretty, this is great. So it's, it's basically swampland. They just want it to, to be untouched. A little opening here, which is very tempting. I really want to go in here and I'm doing it. All these ferns in here, it's just beautiful. Oh, it's just beautiful in here. It's another nice area if you wanna have a private little little picnic. It's a lot of rocks, but um, still relatively private and off the, off the trail. So I recognize that rock wall over there and I'm pretty sure the path goes along that and goes to the University of Toronto Mississauga campus, which has beautiful uh, parkland. There's actually a path back here too. Right. And I remember this place, I have been here before. Yeah, so I recognize this part of the path as it has very distinctive features. And I'm gonna go around the bend here, but I'm pretty sure this leads to the UTM area.
And this, this is where we originally entered, the red trail here. We covered quite a bit of Riverwood Park. Basically, you can enter from the red trail and get to any of the other trails. And we are on our way back to the car. There's the stairs. And my car is in this parking lot. All right, so I've made it back to the, uh, <laughs> the activity mobile here where I have a tattoo studio and boat in my vehicle. I hope you enjoyed that review and overall coverage of Riverwood Park. It's a great place to come. I've been here. I've been here when my kids were little. I've been here on a number of times with, um, with friends exploring the area. Went into a lot of areas that um, I've never been in, especially like the, the back, you know, the off trail areas and some of those little paths um, that are off the main trail. Uh, they're really nice, nice areas. There's a lot, like those areas above where I went up the hill, um, where that homesteading area was, there's a lot of area to explore up there. I could have spent another three, four hours um, exploring all there is to see here, like every square footage of the place, basically. I did go down the entire ravine, which is great, but uh, I think I covered more area here today than I, than I ever have on any previous trips. So I hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day. Bye for now.